first of all, I wanted to say two things. As he was, he did, I'm not even going to need to pray because he did it all up here. Thank you. Um, there's a scripture that's not in my notes, and it's uh, Matthew 11:12. And I think I can quote it. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. Yes. And the violent take it by force. Amen. When I broke that scripture down, it really spoke to me uh, because I ask a lot of questions. I ask God a lot of questions. I'm like that little kid, always asking those questions. I said, well, Lord, why from the days of John the Baptist? It started in the garden. Because that he came proclaiming the coming of the Christ, the one who would defeat Satan. That's why things are amped up after Jesus came. And when you became a Christian, you became targeted. You, you joined the army, really. Uh, Pastor Jovi could get up here and tell you about being in the I couldn't t I couldn't do a push up. I, it would be bad for me to be drafted because I mean I am drafted in this army. I'm in the army of God, which is it's a good army. But a lot of Christians become Christians and they don't realize they've joined the army of God. You've got on a uniform. It's the robe of righteousness, and Satan hates you. He doesn't need a reason or even an open door to come after you. That's his job. That's what he does. So we have to know him, know his ways, know how to recognize him. Um, it says suffereth violence. That means trouble and pressure. Anybody got any of that? Yeah. Myself included. Trouble and pressure. Um, and the violent, that word means vitally active, energetic, and forceful. That should describe the body of Christ. Not passive, lazy, letting somebody else do it. No, we, we have to be violent and take it, what is it? I had somebody tell me one time, he, he thought, it was a, an, uh, an editor actually, he says, you must have been an English major. I said, I have a high school education. He said, well, then you've got a gift. But I do have writers in my family, and English was my favorite subject because I guess there's a natural tendency there. But it, we're talking about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it, the kingdom of heaven, by force. You have to go after it. With violence, vitally active, energetic, and forceful, you have to go after the kingdom of heaven. Okay, and the other thing I was going to say is I went to one semester of college, and one of the things that I was required to take, well, two actually, that, that were a real problem for me was Algebra 2. I never got Algebra 1. I never got Geometry. I never got past basic math. <laughs> But, um, and the other thing was speech. And I didn't show up for any of my speech classes. I actually changed my major because I wanted to be a school teacher. That's what I, I always wanted to be a teacher. The only kind of teacher I knew of was a school teacher. And I went to one semester and, and I got a real bad case of the shingles and had to quit. And for six, I lost six weeks, never went back to school, got a job, bought a car, got into the rat race. But, I'm glad because God, that wasn't what God had planned for me. This is what God had planned for me. And so, but, but I got out, I quit speech because I could not stand up in front of people. There was no way. It was a fear of man. And I got delivered from that. Amen. Praise the Lord. So those were just the two things that I wanted to say. So if you're, if you're all bound up with whatever it is, God can free you from that. And we're going to talk tonight about some um, serious, you know, I was praying, Lord, help me get this all in. I was like Joshua, son, 
<laughs> stand still. <laughs> That's a cool, cool thing that happened. But it's, it's involved, and it's deep, and it's, there's a lot to it. Okay, so we're talking about soul ties, but you can't talk about soul ties without talking about the familiar spirits. You can't even talk about demons without talking about the familiar spirits. And as I said in the beginning, we need to have understanding. What is a familiar spirit? I started, I'm starting with familiar spirits, and then we're going to go um, to soul ties. A familiar spirit is a, the, the word itself is a primary root. It means to know, acquainted with, discover, having to do with kinfolks, kinsmen, relatives. It means cause to know, make known, come to give knowledge, privy to private information, and secret knowledge. Remember the girl that was following Paul around in Acts 16, and she's, these are the men of the Most High God. I mean, she, was, she wasn't even a, a believer. She, was, she had a spirit of divination. And Paul, after a, a time for days, turned around, it says, and spoke to the spirit. He didn't speak to the girl. Just like when uh, Peter said, uh, the Lord was telling him what was going to happen. Oh, no, no, Lord, I'll never let that happen. He says, get thee behind me, Satan. Yeah. He didn't talk to Peter. He was talking to Satan. Yes. And we need to make that distinction, you know, between the person and the spirit. Okay? Yeah. This is what I love about deliverance because it helped me separate the demon from the person. I could continue to love the person. And then begin to bind that demon in that person, especially, you know, if it's a relative. You, you see them all the time, and they give you a hard time. But I was happy when I learned it's a spirit, and I have authority over that thing. So before you go see that person that gives you all that trouble, you start binding that troublemaking spirit. This happened to be a strong spirit of Jezebel in this woman. And I would just start binding it. Amen. And and we could get along fine because she wasn't trying to force <laughs> her opinions, her will, everything. It, it was just a struggle to be with her until I learned how to bind that. Okay? Um, it means intimate associate or a companion. Prognosticator, knowing something beforehand. You know, when, when hurricane season comes around, Oh, man, when those, when those uh, weathermen have a little disturbance, they get so excited. I mean, they are hoping for a big old storm because that's their time to shine. They get 24-hour coverage and probably more money and who knows what. But I start binding those prognosticators. They, this, is, this has the, the capacity to become a, a level five hurt. I break that in Jesus' name, and I send angels. You know, the, the hurricane, let's see, the winds go this way, I think. I send the angels to fly counterclockwise in the atmosphere around it and scatter the winds so that they can't form a hurricane. We have had less. And I put it out on my website every year. It's hurricane season. Let's, if you live in a place where there are wildfires, you can do the same thing. We have dominion over the atmosphere. Over all the earth, Genesis 126 says. All the earth, that's a lot. Um, knowing beforehand, for uh, telling, foretelling with signs or symptoms. Archaic, the word familiar is an archaic word for familial, okay? Uh, that means of or relating to characteristics of a family. The definition of a spirit, and get this, this is really interesting. Interesting. 
a spirit. You look it up in Webster, you look up spirit, it, it says a spirit works closely in relation to soul ties, but it's a spirit held to attend, serve, or guard a person. That's why in the prayer I prayed last night, those spirits that are guiding us in ways that are contrary, because that's what they do. Yeah. You don't realize it. If you're aware in the spirit, I finally understood this. I, I could walk into a place and look at something that didn't interest me, you know, to make a point to look at it. But now I realize it's like the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is going, psst, psst. I'm like, okay, what? And I start looking, and he points things out to me. And familiar spirits will do the same thing. You know, a, sometimes a good-looking woman walks by and a man looks. My husband says, that's what we do. <laughs> but one of the, one of the uh, deliverance men that mentored me says, that is what men do. We see a good-looking woman, we look. The second look costs you. The first look is natural. The second look will cost you. It's almost like turning back to look at Sodom and Gomorrah. That could be troublesome. Okay. And familiar spirits work closely with soul ties. What exactly is a soul tie? I want to give you a biblical example. Remember when Goliath slew David? That was the other thing I, that came to my mind. Someone said, God is not involved in all those sports. And I asked a preacher when I was in church, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? God doesn't care about the Super Bowl. He didn't care about competition. I said, I know one that he did, David and Goliath. <laughs> that was a competition. And God had David. David beat Goliath. After that was over, this is in 1 Samuel 18, verses 1 through 4. This is afterwards. Saul was so impressed with David. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. Now the word knit is, the definition is to make a fabric or garment by intertwining yarn or thread in a series of connected loops, either by hand or with, or with knitting needles or on a machine. It means to form yarn or thread into fabric by intertwining, to join closely, unite securely, to draw, I wasn't going to say that one, to draw the brows together. Someone, that's a knit when you look like that. Uh, to become securely joined or mended together as a fractured bone. You know, they put the bone back together and it knits together. My grandmother knitted, and I'm telling you, if you took, if you, let's just say you took an ordinary T-shirt and played tug-of-war with it, that T-shirt at some point is going to rip. It'll get weak and rip. You do that with something that's knitted, it ain't happening. It is strong. And when people, that's why these soul ties are so devastating to our lives because they are strong hard to break if you don't know what to do in verse 4 it says and Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments even to his sword 
and to his bow and to his girdle. Now, all of these things that Jonathan did are symbolic. It was a covenant action, a friendship like, uh, like family. There was a devotion and loyalty in doing those actions um, was saying, okay, now whatever I have is yours. And your battles are going to be my battles. I will fight your battles just like I fight my battles. And you have access to everything I have. Now, this was not a perverted relationship. Remember, I was talking about doctrines of devils the other day. And I've heard people try to pervert this story. It's not a perverted story. Satan wants to pervert it to fit man. Okay, so this is the way I explain a soul tie. It's like, how many of you have ever gone fishing? Okay, so the fish are in the water. They're swimming wherever they want to go. And the fisherman, of course, is after fish. He puts a lure. He throws it out there. And when you can't see the, uh, the string is like transparent. You can't see the string once it gets in the water. It's invisible, just like soul ties are invisible to us. But the point is the fish have the freedom in the water. But the minute he takes the bait, the fish no longer has authority over its own self. It is at the mercy of the fisherman. And the fisherman pulls. I've seen, I've seen like uh, deep sea fishing, and they'll pull them in and then they'll let the string out, you know. And, but the fish has no authority anymore. And that's what a soul tie will do to you. And people don't understand how strong these soul ties are. How do soul ties happen? How do we get a soul tie? It happens in close relationships. It can happen like with children, their first soul tie is with their mommy and daddy and siblings. We all start that way with mommy and daddy and siblings and then grandparents and cousins and friends in the neighborhood. You can have good soul ties. Those are good soul ties. They can go into bad soul ties. I had a brother that his favorite thing to do was torment me. He said, you were such an easy target, though. I could make you cry and paddle and uh, but then sometimes they become bad soul ties I had to break that evil soul tie between me and my brother I didn't know to do it for a very long time then you have close friends that you can form soul ties with yeah. enemies you have a fight with someone or you can't stand them Whoop. You can't stand them, you have a soul tie. Yeah. That's, a, that's an evil soul tie. Sexual partners, that's the strongest. Yeah. God showed me years ago that sex is the highest form of witchcraft in the world. Witchcraft. There's a purpose when it is outside of the covenant of marriage and it's destructive. Yeah. First Corinthians six says, 
six thirteen through twenty. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. And now the body is not for fornication. I want to stop right there because most of us understand the word of fornication to mean the sex act. But it's actually any form of forbidden touching. Not just sex, but relationships move into areas that are forbidden. That's why in 1 Corinthians 7... First scripture says, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Now, that doesn't mean like a pat on the arm or anything. You look that up, it means a uh, tight, it means full body contact. You know, these, these kids that are allowed to watch movies in their bedrooms with their girlfriends, they're all snuggled up on the bed. The scripture says, but to avoid fornication because it will lead to fornication. It will lead to that. You have to guard yourself very carefully with that because it is the strongest soul tie. It's the strongest good soul tie between a husband and a wife. So, the body is not for fornication. Verse 15 says, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Now I want to stop right there because Genesis 2.24 says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. A husband and a wife. Now the world wants to change the definitions of those Who knew we would ever have to go back? A husband and a wife. You look up the word husband, it means a man who is married to a woman. And a wife, the definition is, a woman who is married to a man. That's the word of God. They become one. Um, I met a young man. He introduces me to his fiance. That's another word that has a new meaning today. I said, oh, when are y'all getting married? Uh, married? Oh, uh, well, I didn't say we were getting married. Yeah. Yeah. I said, then you need to introduce her as something else. Because a fiancé is someone who has a ring on their finger and a date set to be married. It's not your recent shack up or whoever you're living with or whoever you're bedding with. No, we're not going to mince our words. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man does is without the body. What, it, what that means is it's um, outside the body. It's outside the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. There's a curse attached to that. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So, 
young people, make sure you are glorifying God in your body. What does that mean? I, I was thinking about that. If you can't invite Jesus to do it with you, you in trouble. When you have uh, a soul tie with people, you can have a soul tie with people that you have done sinful activities with. Crimes. You know, you and a buddy break into a house or two girls shoplift or whatever. The one who gives you your first cigarette, the first time you do drugs, first time you engage in porn, all of these things, soul ties are made. A lot of kids now are experimenting. Schools are teaching them that anything goes. Doesn't matter. Maybe you're, oh, you like that? Maybe, maybe you're not really a boy. Maybe you're a girl. Which is confusion. Also, anyone who has hurt you or wounded you, you can have a soul tie with. I hope you are making a mental list. Be making a mental list. Soul ties, you can also have soul ties with memberships of organizations, the people that are in the organization with you, even occupational through taking an oath. An oath will form a soul tie with everybody that is in the organization. Doctors, lawyers, policemen, firemen, military, fraternities, lodges. We know about the Masons, but let me tell you something. There are tons of those kind of... I mean, I was walking in the cemetery one day looking for my great-grandmother's grave. And um, you see all of these uh, something of the woodsmen. And there's all kinds of those fellowships, those lodges... And believe me, it runs thick, sometimes thicker than blood, sometimes thicker than family. And those are all wrong because they're secret. A lot of them are secret. I love the scripture, and this is not in my notes, but Jesus said, in private, I have said nothing. Everything he spoke, he spoke it openly. There was no secret chamber or secret words you had to know to get in. No. Matthew 5, 33 through 37. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said of them by old, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, now see people who say of the Bible, nothing has changed. Oh, yes. Go read Matthew chapter 5. You have heard it said of old, but I, Jesus, say unto you, there's been a lot of changes. In the Old Testament, it was like, like he said, you look upon a woman with lust. In the New Testament, no, you commit adultery. You, you were stoned to death in the Old Testament for committing adultery. Yeah. In the New Testament, he says, you have heard it said of old not to commit adultery. But I say unto you, if you even look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery already. It got more serious almost than being stoned because it's a matter of your heart. Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, neither by earth, for it is his footstool. Neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear 
by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, or yes, nay, nay, or no. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. We're not supposed to take an oath. You hear people say, oh, I'm going to come pick you up next Tuesday. You swear? You know, you've heard people say that. You swear? Or they'll tell you something and say, swear. Swear to me. Or they'll make a statement, I swear to God. I swear on my mother's grave. And people who say, they say something and they go, isn't that right? Isn't that right? I always have trouble believing somebody that needs <laughs> backup. <laughs> hey, I believe you. What are you doing? And yet they'll make you take an oath on a Bible in court. Then I heard they were taking the Bible out and I was outraged. And then I thought, well, that's just like the devil to make you take an oath on the Bible. When the Bible says don't make an oath. Food for thought, but I want, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Just repeat after me. Father, right now I ask you to bring to my mind oaths that I have made, and I renounce and fall out of agreement with the oath that I took. Now, whether it was a job, joining something, whatever, we renounce that oath. Or in making a pact with anyone, or swore to anything, and I break the covenant I unknowingly made with all the others who took the same oath. I didn't know what I was doing at that time and how it was going to affect me. And I ask you to forgive me now. I break the soul ties with that organization and all the other members. I send their souls and spirits back to them. I call my soul and spirit back to myself, cleansed and sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I ask you to heal my mind and restore my soul. Every spirit that came into me upon taking that oath, I command to get out of me now. In Jesus' name. And every familiar spirit that attached themselves to me at that time and through those relationships, I command them to leave me now. In Jesus' name. I was um, in, a, in a deliverance meeting, and there was um, a man, a, a big man. He was a Marine, I think. And they took him through an initiation. And they put chains on him, and... Um, there were two of them, two guys that were in this initiation. When they brought the person through, he was supposed to act like a mad dog. And he manifested that when he was being prayed for. He was growling and snoring on his head. I mean, he looked like a dog, looked like a dog. acted like a dog. But see, a, a spirit of a dog came into him when he did that. I mean, a thing around, choker around the neck, a chain, uh, maybe a muzzle, I don't remember, but I asked him, where do you think that came from? And he told me, he said, I hadn't thought about this in years, but when I was initiated, I had to be a dog. And, and that thing was still there. And it got broken. 
Soul ties are also formed through uh, the cutting of the skin where there is bloodshed. Remember, God gave the circumcision. It was a, his covenant between man and him. This is how sly the devil is. He knows about the covenant. So anytime we allow ourselves to be cut where there is bloodshed, you have a soul tie with that person. In the spiritual realm, you made a covenant with that person. It happens during surgeries. It happens during blood transfusions. Organ transplants. Well, I've heard some stories with organ transplant transplants. This big old guy had to have a heart transplant. He got the heart of a little woman. Her hobby was knitting. And do you know after he had the surgery, he had a desire to knit. And another woman who got a liver or a uh, something from somebody he was a guitar smoker a g <laughs> cigar <laughs> he was a cigar smoker he loved cigar <laughs> can you see somebody smoking a guitar <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness okay anyway after her surgery she wanted a cigar she started smoking cigars. Now, this was bizarre to people, but they didn't understand soul ties and familiar spirits. They had the familiar spirit of that person. I know I may step on some toes here, but when you have a tattoo... It's a blood covenant and soul ties with the person who gives you, who does the tattoo, the artist. I'm not condemning you, but I strongly suggest you break the soul ties with your tattoo person. I don't care if they're a biker or a Sunday school teacher. It doesn't matter. We get ourselves in trouble doing things that form. And listen, Satan knows. He knows, the, he knows what that is. What happens, like when that man in the fishing boat catches the fish, they're connected. Now, of course, you know, we pull them up, split them, eat them. But... When you have a soul tie with somebody, it becomes like a bridge because you're, you're connected to them in the spirit realm. It's invisible, but the demons see it, and it's real. This is why um, you may have dreams about an ex-lover. Um, you may begin to experience problems that belong to the person you have a soul tie with. Because it travels over. That's why it's important to break those things so that you can be free. And it's amazing. All of a sudden, you quit having those dreams. You quit, you know, they just pop into my mind all the time. I don't even want to think about them, but they're popping into my mind. Yeah, because you have a soul tie with that person. You have an evil soul tie with somebody that you've had a big argument with. You, you, you're continuing that argument forever and ever in your mind. <laughs> That's a soul tie. Spirits are attached to that. Leviticus 17.11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And here again, Hosea 4.6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But the second part of that is because you have rejected knowledge. 
I used to think, oh, those poor people, they're just uneducated. No, they've probably been told they just reject it. Okay, now familiar spirits. No, my phone jumped, I'm sorry. I know this is not really a good way to do this, but when I'm out of town, it works good for me. Well, I say that. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to go to Leviticus 19.31. I already read the definition of that, didn't I? Regard them not that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Okay, now I'm going to use this booklet for this section. Leviticus 20, verse 6. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards, to go a-whoring after them. That means, see, in God's eyes, when you go to some other source or power, it's like spiritual adultery. That's why it's called go a-whoring. And after wizards to go a-whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul, and I will cut him off from among his people. Now, I don't really understand what cut off means, but it doesn't sound good. (laughs) Spiritual adultery. Leviticus 20, verse 7. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Sanctify yourself means keep yourself clean. And pure. Verse 8, and ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. In Deuteronomy 18, verses 9 through 13. When thou see when the when the Hebrews were moving from bondage, God was bringing them to the land of milk and honey. He said, when thou art come into the land which the Lord God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination. You know, there are spirits of divination at work in the church. A lot of people have come out of a lot of garbage. Some of them were in the occult, and then they get saved, and then they want to serve God, and they may give you a prophecy that is not a prophecy from God, but divination, because they have a divining spirit. And you you have to be really careful. I've seen people's lives absolutely wrecked. Because a prophet told them this, and they went out to try to fulfill that prophecy. Now, you don't have to be scared of that. You know what I do? I cover myself. If I go to a meeting, like I break soul ties, they say, you do that even when you're at a conference? I said, I do that especially when I'm at a conference. Because, like I said the other night, God cast Satan to the earth, and he had that whole dirt ball, big old earth. But where did he show up? In the garden where God was doing a work. And Satan assigns people to go wherever God is doing a work. Witches, I mean, he wants to wreck, they want to wreck, Satan wants to wreck the church. He'll send a seductive spirit in there. You see it happen all the time. 
And without deliverance, the best thing you can have is a mixture. That's why it's so important to get these things cast out so that when you do serve God, you're serving out of a, uh, his, the water of living water and not a cesspool. Making his son or daughter pass through the fire. I used to not know what that meant, but it, it has to do with uh, sacrificing, sacrificing your children. And they had a big statue, and there was fire. There was a fire under here. And, of course, it was outside of the city. It's kind of like, you know, that Burning Man thing that goes on? The Burning Man in California. Are y'all familiar with that? You don't need to be. But a lot of politicians and actors and actresses and sports, big sports people, I think you have to be invited to it, but it is abject evil. But anyway, when you sacrifice, that's putting your children, making them go through the fire. But you know what? I've seen parents torment their children so much that it's like that they're putting them through a fire. It could be a, you know, a metaphor. Or that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. Verse 11, or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. You know, when I was driving into town the other day, I passed a psychic house. When I pass anything like that, I bind the spirit, the kingdom of darkness in that place. I bind it and I break its power. Get it out of the city. I, I, I've done that to bars. I've done it to tattoo parlors. <laughs> but, you know, anything that is going to defile, anything that would defile. And, and you can do that. I've heard testimonies of people that just started binding all the drug dealers in their towns, and they left. Amen. You've got the power to bind and to loose. I used to pass this little Baptist church out in the country where we lived. Loved the man, sweet, all their, you know, just, every, I loved them all. Lord, I loose the Holy Ghost into that church. <laughs> Send your Holy Ghost into that church. Well, you know what? The man was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And he became Pentecostal. Not, not you know, under the title, but, you know, he now speaks in tongues. He's, he's excited. <coughs> you know what? I don't, I don't hold anything against anybody. If we can agree that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then we can agree. We're in unity. That's the most important thing. Um. So a consulter with familiar spirits, that's like going to a psychic, a palm reader, all of those things. That, that will, you, can, you can pick up familiar spirits there, and they use familiar spirits. Now, the way that works is you go in, and you have familiar spirits with you that have been with you, that have been with your family for centuries. And you go sit down at the psychic or crystal ball or palm reader or whatever, and you, your familiar spirit is there, and she has a familiar spirit. And the spirits converse. Hey, ask her if her aunt has a little dog named Pug. True. Yes. And then they are, they are hooked. That's how that works. You know those, those shows like... I don't watch them. I've heard of them. Like crossing over, it's a medium. 
And people go there because they've lost a loved one and they just, they want someone that can contact them so that they can, that's necromancy. You are forbidden to talk to the dead. You know, my daddy died when I was 30 and we were very close. And sometimes I'll say, Lord, go tell my daddy I sure do miss him. Lord, go tell my daddy. I don't talk to my daddy. Some people do. That's necromancy. The second mentioned is this so-called list that has to do with consulting anyone or anything who uses powers from the kingdom of darkness. That's the psychics, the mediums. Tarot cards, a lot of things that kids are making games out of. They're dangerous. The Ouija board. I told my granddaughter, if you're ever at a party and somebody brings out a Ouija board, get out of there. It's witchcraft and all other forms of dark arts, even things seemingly harmless like horoscopes. Some forms of magic are nothing more than the use of witchcraft. I've seen some magic on t stuff on TV, um, it's not magic. It is witchcraft. Levitation is done by demons. The demons lift the person. It's not sleight of hand. Other fantastical feats are merely the use of demonic powers. I'm telling you the truth. So that you can, if you've done any of those things in the past, you need to repent, break the soul ties. Yeah. Because honestly, sometimes we, a fascination might have been caused by the fact that that runs in our bloodline. You know, every culture, oh yeah, my, my granny can read tea leaves and, you know, all this stuff. My friend's mother was Native American Indian, and she had this necklace that was passed down generation. That necklace, my friend said, that necklace talks to her at night. No, it's a demon. It's a demon. These practices were and still are forbidden by God, and yet some Christians practice, go to those things and think nothing of it because they, they either haven't been taught or they're rejecting the knowledge. Romans one twenty eight says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Are fit for Christians. Romans 129, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, or those disloyals to God, despite despiteful, proud boasters. Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding covenant breakers, without natural affection. He talked about unnatural affection. Um, there's a lot of inordinate affections between people yes. and animals and other things. Inordinate affections. Without natural affection, covenant breakers, implacable, unmerciful, Romans 132, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. These things cause you to be worthy of death, but have pleasure in them that do them. Those who do these things they don't want to retain the knowledge of God. They want to put it aside and do what they want to do. So I'm going to um, lead you through a prayer. So, Father, 
I ask you to forgive me for all the times I hardened my heart against you in order to commit sin, to do what I wanted to do. Forgive me for suppressing my conscience. The thing that you created in me to know right from wrong and that should have kept me from sinning against you. I repent. Now, I hope God has been kind of pricking your memory of things that, oh, my goodness, I did that. Oh, my goodness, I did that. Oh, oh, my goodness, I did that. And even after you get home, ask God to remind you, Lord, if there's anything else, let me know what it is so that I can repent because we tend to forget. I break the power of the curses that came upon me through those sins and through obedience to you will walk in your blessings. And Deuteronomy 28 that I told y'all to go to read about the curses and the blessings. You need to do that. Father, I ask you to forgive me for going to those using powers of darkness and familiar spirits instead of going to you for answers or help. I now command out of me the spirits that came into me when I sought the kingdom of darkness and went to a palm reader, a psychic, a fortune teller, had someone read my tarot cards, a Ouija board, and all other practices that violated you. I break their power and command them to come out of me now in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, all those spirits of divination, witchcraft, darkness, all those spirits come out right now. I command them to leave God's people in Jesus' name. And I, I give leave to the familiar spirits that attach themselves to me from them to go in Jesus' name. Now, all those familiar spirits that, that attach themselves to you when you did those things, I command them to go right now in the name of Jesus. And I break the soul ties between you and them. We sever that soul tie in the name of Jesus. Now, just take a deep breath. <sighs> okay. There was, um, in the spiritual realm, spirits can see other spirits that are around us, depending on your generational bloodline. You know, Grandpa might have been a great woodworker. You know, he could make cabinets better than anybody in this county or ten counties around. But you don't know that he molested all the grandkids or the neighbors. That, those are things that people keep secret. And let me tell you, Satan has his greatest power in the area of your secrets. You need to let go of the secret. You need to reveal that to someone you can trust. Confess your faults. Be anointed that you can be healed. I'm not saying just anybody. Somebody you trust. Somebody that's going to love you after. See, it's like, like one time I was leading this prayer group. I had read a book. Um, had packed my Bible. I was on a long flight. And I didn't have anything to read. I realized, Dad, come in. I packed my Bible. This is before cell phones. And I went into the bookstore. Maybe there's a book I could read that, you know, because long flights are long flights. And I, I like a good mystery, and I, I found one. It was the girl with the dragon tattoo. I didn't know what I know now. 
I read the book. It was a, a real page turner. But almost to the end of the first book, I didn't know it was a series, they start dropping little things, and I thought, Lord, don't tell me they're going to make this girl be bisexual or something. Because she would see men, and then, then all of a sudden they're talking about these women. I'm like, oh, gosh. So, so they go to her apartment, and I'm like, flip, 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 flip. I'm not going to, I don't want the images. I don't want the words. I don't want any of that in my mind. I'd look down at one sentence. Nope. Flip, 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 till it was over. And then I would pick up with the book. So in this, in this Bible study, this girl, I was teaching on sexual sins and doing deliverance on sexual sins. And as soon as I started praying the deliverance, she got up and went to the bathroom. And I, 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 I saw her get up, but I didn't, it didn't register. When it was all over with, everybody left, and that her purse and stuff was still there. And she came out of the bathroom, and she looked horrible. I don't know what was going on. She was in terrible torment. And she was sitting there, and I said, what is it? Don't, don't leave with it. You know, let's, let's deal with it. And uh, she just kept looking at me, and I said, I know what's going on. The devil is saying, you better not tell her. You better not tell her. She's not going to think about you the way she does if you tell her. And I said, I, I can see what's happening. I said, you need to just shut him up and say it. Once you say it, you're free from the secret. I was not prepared for what came. But, you know, I say when I'm in the zone, I, I am not distracted. I, I, go, I go for it, the thing. And she said, I'm sexually attracted to you. So the, the two ladies, the house that owned the house, one owned the house, one was the best friend, and I was friends with both of them, they were like in shock. They just sat there. I, I immediately, I put my stuff down, I went over to her, and I started doing deliverance. And she got delivered. Now, when I left the house, and my friends are like, I don't know how you got through that. And I said, it had no effect on me, on my spirit woman. Now, my flesh woman in there is saying, what? <laughs> Lord. <laughs> and when I left there, I had a conversation with the Lord. I said, Lord, where did that come from? You know there's not any of that in me at all whatsoever. So he said, well, you remember that book you read? And I thought, I'm not a book reader, y'all. I'm a Bible reader, but I'm not a book reader. It was rare that I read a book. So when he said, you know that book you read, I knew exactly what he was talking about because I don't read books. So I was like, oh, I started thinking about what was in the book. Even though I didn't read it, that's why I said the other night, these th we may have things in our home that are drawing and causing influences on you or your children that you have no knowledge of. Do an inventory. Get things out of your house that are unclean. There was a familiar spirit attached to that book. And when I read the book, the familiar spirit attached to me. And her demon and spirit, that familiar spirit, was interacting with the spirit that was on that book. It's a serious thing. This is, this is serious business. The devil is not playing. He's, if he can't have your soul, he wants to destroy yes. what you have yes. or what God has planned for you. He wants to steal it. So they see in the spiritual realm, 
and we have these things that have come down our family line. One of my mother's good friends, her husband died. She was in her 90s. I was at Lake Hamilton. My mother calls me, which is rare. When, then nobody calls me when I'm at Lake Hamilton, which, you know, I haven't been there in some years because God said, you're not going to be there with the same regularity. I didn't know why. I just said, yes, sir. Called the people. Can't put me on the list all the time to be a speaker. I'm not divorcing y'all. I'm not upset about anything. I'm just telling you what God said. But anyway, I called my mother. Well, listen, Rosemary wants you to call her as soon as she gets home, as soon as you get home. I said, what's wrong with Rosemary? She wouldn't tell me. She wants to talk to you. I said, okay. So I called her, and she's telling me that she got up in the middle of the night to go to the restroom, and she was going to turn off the light. You know how you look at your path before you flip off the light? Well, there was her husband sitting on the bed, her dead husband. That's a familiar spirit. Wasn't her husband. Looks like her husband, sounded like her husband, smelled like her husband. Everything was just like her husband. I said, well, so what did you do? Well, I wasn't scared of him. I just thought it was God's way of letting me know that he's looking after me. I said, well, that sounds real good. But if it happens again, you need to open your mouth and say, in the name of Jesus, get out. Well, he wasn't bothering me. I said, yet. Yet. They start out friendly because they want you to embrace them. And then before you know it, you're in big trouble. And a lot of women have big trouble at night with spirits coming. And that's, that's from soul ties and familiar spirits. A medical one that really struck me. My husband has an optical shop, and this man came in, and he's blind in his right eye, so he doesn't need prescription lens. He just gets a plain lens. He's got a fake eye. And... Um, he and his wife have three kids. They had two girls. And then he had an accident at work. That's why he was blind. He was a lineman for the electric company. And there was an accident, and he, it blew his eye out. And so he couldn't see out of his right eye. Now, I don't know what happened. I don't know if there was a lawsuit. I don't know if he held unforgiveness. I didn't know what I know now, or I would have prayed with him. But... They came in one day with their son, who was born after the accident, and he was blind in the right eye. The kid. The kid didn't have the accident. The daddy had the accident. But that was a familiar spirit of blindness in the right eye. And they took that child every... There, there was nothing wrong with the eye. That was, you know, nothing wrong with the eye. He couldn't see out of it. They went to every healer, you know. They were desperate for their son to be able to see. But it was a familiar spirit of blindness. See, it's, we can help people if we know these things. Yeah. I would have prayed for the little boy, but I didn't know it then. So that's why we need to know. And then I'm going to close with this because in the, in the Old Testament, we are forbidden to touch the dead. If you don't know about that, you can look it up in the Bible. I don't have the scriptures, but you were considered unclean if you touched the dead. And yet there are people who want their children to kiss grandpa in the, in the casket and all manner of stuff. And if they did do it, then they were unclean and they had to be put out of the gates of the city for a, a time. And then they had to do these special washings and stuff. Um, and there again, you know, if you know about these things, you can cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. 
When I walk in a hospital, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus because there are familiar spirits of sicknesses. You know, you're laying in a bed. Somebody might have died in that bed. There's familiar spirits there. So you need to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus for protection. And my mother married a veterinarian, and this gave me a physical picture of a spiritual thing. They were operating on an animal. My mother would go in to hand him the instruments. Well, she said, you want to hear something weird? I said, what? When an animal dies, every flea and tick, worm, whatever, vacates the body. Because the life is in the blood. they got to have a living host. Isn't that strange? But it's the same way. When, it, when we die, our, our spirit, our soul goes to be with Jesus. But where are the demons? They, they're in the flesh, those things that defile. And they leave, just like, just like the man that had that legion cast out of him. They all left went into the pigs because they asked to go to the pigs. So we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. And, and what I have begun to pray is like if somebody is dying, I bind those things to their bones. Let them go to the grave with them and stay there forever. Won't they be tormented? They can't go somewhere else and ruin somebody else's life. But I bind them to the bones. So there, you know, I said, get creative. Bind them to the bones. I do that to protect the other family members. The veterinarian, when he was dying in the TV room in the hospital bed, I went to stay with him, let my mother have a break. And I was going to ask God to come get him because he was so close to death, it was, he just wouldn't die. I'm holding his hand. And, and he had his head to the wall like that. And I picked up his hand, and his head goes. It's kind of freaky. And I thought, he hadn't talked. I thought, he's going to talk to me. And his eyes go, bing. But they were not his eyes. And then he did a very seductive wink. I put his hand down. He closed his eyes, and his head automatically went right back where it was. And I was driving home. I didn't know any of this stuff. I said, Lord, what in the world? He said, he, had, he has a spirit of lust. And he was known all over. And, and my aunts got real mad when my mama married him. And she said, I tell you what, if I ever suspect, you're out. <laughs> mama was no mercy. But, yeah. And then when he died, all four of his sons were standing there and all of his little grandchildren. And I've prayed for them since, not one-on-one, -on -one, but bound. If that spirit of lust went into any of them, I bind it in the name of Jesus so that it does not cause them to be philanderers. But anyway, this stuff is real. And, and I don't want you to... Listen, the good news is... In the name of Jesus, we can break those things. We can get rid of those things. We are freer. I pray that each of you will experience just one, but maybe more, areas that all of a sudden you even feel it. That's what happened to me. You feel it. You can actually feel it. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I, th I cover each one of these here with the blood of Jesus. And, and I also bind and break the power of every spirit of backlash and retaliation from the enemy. Because he doesn't want them to know the truth so that they can be made free from his torment. I bind every tormenting spirit and break its power and command it to go. I bind every lying spirit 
that will come and say, it's a bunch of malarkey. Don't, don't, even, don't even think about it. I break the power of that lying spirit, and I command it to shut up and go in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you will bring to their memory things and people, instances where there have been soul ties made and familiar spirits attached, and now they know what to do with them, breaking the soul ties, commanding those familiar spirits to go in the name of Jesus, that we can walk in a greater degree of freedom in your kingdom and serve you with all our hearts. Bless each one with a good night's sleep. Lord, I even if there are familiar spirits of infirmities in this room, I command you to go in the name of Jesus. I speak to the spirits of infirmity. Even if you inherit it, I break the power of those inherited infirmities and I command them to go in the name of Jesus. And I speak healing. I apply the shed and resurrected blood of Jesus Christ to every person, every part of your bodies, your minds. Lord, heal their minds and their organs, their bones, their blood. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Father. We love you. We thank you for loving us. Amen. Thank you.